almost here. In just nine days, the defending champions will officially start their quest to repeat as the Boston Celtics and the Denver Nuggets get the honor of being the first two franchises to tip off ahead of their preseason trip to Abu Dhabi. NBA reporter Tim Bonteps is in the building. He's in the house. Welcome to NBA right Today. Here. Now, Tim, the Celtics haven't repeated since, what, 1968, 1969? What's going to need to happen for Boston to go back to back? That's a crazy stat. I hadn't thought of that. But, yeah, they haven't repeated since Bill Russell was on the team. And if they're going to do it, Chanae, it's going to be because of health. They can get Chris S. Porzingis back. He got surgery after the finals after he suffered that rare injury in his ankle. If he's able to come back in January, if they can have the rest of the team stay healthy throughout the course of the season. Boston had incredible health last year year we saw during the run of the playoffs basically everybody else got hurt as we know injury is a huge part of this but if they stay healthy it's the best top six in the league and they're going to be the heavy favorites to win the east be in the finals again and potentially repeat it's also since the last time we went to the moon right that's that the last is, that's time they true. repeated that's thanks true. tim don't go too far well the celtics are looking to repeat there are plenty of teams that are trying to make it eight straight years with different champions now Paul George, he took his talents to Philly. Clay left the Bay to team up with Luka Doncic and Kyrie in Dallas. And New York, they snagged Mikhail Bridges to fortify the Nova Knicks. So plenty of big moves this offseason. So I have to bring in Big Perk. What new face in new places is going to make the most noise and move the needle for their team, Perk? You know what? I want to lean towards Philadelphia with the addition of Paul George, but I got to see how that look. I'm going with the New York Knicks getting Mikael Bridges. Look, he could be what Drew Holiday is for the Boston Celtics. That's how elite this young man is on both ends of the floor. We saw when Phoenix made their run with Devin Booker and CP3 to the NBA Finals. And just remember, a couple season, seasons ago, he averaged 26 points. Now, I know he only played about 27 games, but still in all, I'm to the point now where I don't even look at Mikael Bridges as a, as a role player. He's a guy that's an all-star caliber player, and I think that was the best addition this offseason. Plus, he's with Tom, he's a Tom Thibodeau type of guy. He is, but you also are a New York kind of guy, too. Kendrick Perkins taking the Knicks. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Thank you, Perk. Whatever. While nine All-Stars, whatever, have switched teams this summer, they didn't choose to team up with the faces of the league as they approached the final stages of their careers. LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant might not have added new co-stars this offseason, but the goal remains the same, win. Now let's welcome in David Dennis Jr. Which of these future Hall of Famers do you give the best shot, David, to contend for a championship this season. So while I do think that Wardell, Stephen Curry, of D. Davis, and Kyles will probably have the best individual season statistically, as far as team-wide goes, I got to go with Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns. They added some point guards, including Tyus Jones, who has the best assist to turnover ratio ever, which is going to help distribute that ball. And what we saw from Devin Booker in that Olympics is a guy who knows now how to play with other stars and to fill in different gaps. I definitely think that the Phoenix Suns are going to go a little bit further in the playoffs. Yeah, we did see this trio just do some amazing things in the Olympics. And speaking of which, LeBron, Katie, and Steph have combined for seven MVPs. And ESPN Bet doesn't give any of the three icons great odds to make it eight. They are all outside the top 10 MVP favorites, a group that's led actually by Luka Doncic at plus 350, followed by Nikola Jokic at plus 375, and then Giannis, SGA, and Joel Embiid. So, Perk, there are nine active players with an MVP trophy at their, ch you know, chest in, like, their nice little offices. Who has the best chance to make it 10 by winning their first MVP this season? The young man that we've been comparing to Michael Jordan, the young man that actually took his team to the Western Conference Finals, the young man that knocked off the defending champs in order to be out of the postseason, his name Anthony Edwards. And look, I think right now from watching what I saw last year, especially in the Olympics, Anthony Edwards is out to go get his. He wants to win, but this year, I wouldn't be surprised if he leads the league in scoring, to be honest with you. He's just not waiting on anyone. And again, he I know he wants to win the championship. He has said that time and time again. But Anthony Edwards also wants to stack up those individual accolades. Anthony Edwards also wants to be the future face of the NBA. And in order to get to that route, he knows, just like everybody else, you got to go get that MVP. Perk, certainly right about Ant wanting to be the MVP of the league, wanting to be the guy. You know, we've seen him take on every opportunity he can to show how good a player he is. But these things tend to happen in stages, right? And we see guys get from being guys who were talked about as possible MVP candidates 
to guys who finish in the top two or three in voting to then go on to win the award. And we saw last year, Shea Gilles Alexander, Luka Doncic finished second and third in the voting. My pick is that Luka Doncic, after going to the finals, beating Anthony Edwards and Shea Gilles Alexander in the playoffs last year, that was the kind of run that gives him the, motive, the, the momentum from a narrative perspective to go into this season to me as the favorite to win this award. You guys know I do the straw poll every year, and a big part of the award every year is the narrative that comes into the season where you sit. Where was Luka coming into last season? Coming off finishing 11th in the Western Conference, the way that Dallas ended that season tanking to kit Derek Lively Jr. in the draft, right? So now you're coming off making the finals, all this energy behind Luka. I think he is my pick to end up at the top of the heap at the end of next season. Uh, pardon me for going a little bit paper here. I'm going to go to the guy who was right there last season, right there in the MVP conversation, who a lot of people <laughs> think, you know, had a shot or should have got it last year, which is SGA. 30 points, six uh, assists, five and a half rebounds at 53% from the field, and he was a top defender at the guard position, was leading all the guards in stocks, was uh, leading in steals percentage. The guy is, you know, was one of the best players in the league last season. Add that to the fact that that Oklahoma City Thunder team has improved, and in my opinion, that team is going to run away with the number one seed in the Western Conference in the, in the regular season, and that makes that, you know, for SGA because a lot of times when you have guys who are on the precipice of an MVP and you have a season that is right there just as good or nearly as good or even better that puts them in good position for MVP that's why I think it's SGA all right I love being tie break so I believe that the first MVP <laughs> award in their office will go to Luka Doncic there you go I'm right I mean we've already love seen it. him lead, <laughs> leading the league in scoring but also if he's not motivated coming off of last year making to NBA Finals, sometimes like that defense getting exposed, but then you bring in the fixer, Clay Thompson, to knock down, you know, corner three, spot up threes. Your team is better. I mean, they created something that's really good, and I think the next step in his maturation is that MVP. And then.